Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that I think you should read in your lifetime, which is ridiculously subjective. These are not going to be my all-time favorite books, although a lot of the books on this list would make that video. This is going to be a list of books that made me really stop and think that were really reflective books for me that were very influential to me or very important to me because of the topics they explored and I love them and appreciate them for those things. First book on this list is going to be a classic, The Count of Monte Cristo. This is a tough book for me to talk about spoiler free because I think that everything that I love and appreciate about this book is a spoiler. Um, so I think you should read it. Uh, it is, it, it's big, but it's worth every page. Um, it starts out with a kid who was living the good life his life abruptly changes and then he abruptly changes. And it's a story of descent. It's a story of drastic change based off of your circumstances, becoming a product of your circumstances, becoming a product of, of the things that you've gone through. And then a lot of self-reflection of those things and of what you've become. And I love that. And you'll find that it's a, it's a theme in this, in this list now that I think about it. But that's about as much as I could stay, keep, say keeping it spoiler free because this book is quite the ride and there's a lot of twists and turns. It also just has a really phenomenal plot, a really complex, interesting, exciting storyline that is very unpredictable if you happen to go in not already knowing the story. And um, I highly recommend it. Next book on this list is going to be, oh man, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. This is a book that is good for all ages. You can read it to your child, which I have. You can read it as an adult, which I have. Both times you'll cry. This does such a phenomenal job of taking very complex thoughts, emotions, feelings, and things that we can struggle with, taking these really complex things, breaking it down into such a digestible, and yet blunt way that can just kind of surprise you and how it makes you think about it a little bit differently, a little bit more vulnerably. And oftentimes it's done from the perspective of, but it's okay, but you're gonna be okay. So it's also such an encouraging book. It's a book that really, really surprised me. Um, I think the subscriber that sent this to me said that they sent it to me for my son. So I read it to my son. And you know, he 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 sat through the whole thing. He's only three. And um, it there's not a lot of words to the page. I love the artwork in it. And I cried my way through it. And it was a book that I wish I had read as a kid. It's a book I will be reading to my kids many times. It's a book I will be reading on my own many times. It's a book I cannot recommend enough and it's such a fast easy read that I think you will come back to many many times. Next book on my list is going to be Wuthering Heights. So this book is oftentimes viewed as romance. Please don't go into it viewing it as a romance. It was published as a tragedy. Think of it as a tragedy. It's a tragedy and it is about the cycle of abuse. It follows people who have been abused and continue that cycle. This book is really 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 valuable to me because I have such strong feelings about this concept and about this story and, and this book, the way it's written is not heavy handed. It's more written in a way of examples. So it's easy to kind of just see it as a story and not see it as also a reflection piece. And then just say, wow, that story was depressing, hated that. But to me it was so, val it's kind of like that episode of Avatar where Katara, I won't say spoilers, goes to find someone that she has a grudge against. And that episode of Avatar had me sobbing because it explores the same concepts here. It explores the concepts of holding on to what's been done to you and letting it turn you into that thing. And this book is so daggum valuable to me because it so blatantly and brutally shows it and I appreciate it so much for that. Let's go lighter. Let's talk about how to win friends and influence people. I don't know where my copy of this is. I, weird story. 
Oh, it's over there! How to win friends and influence people. I recently reorganized my bookshelves. My three-year-old son wanted to help me. I gave him all my nonfiction, told him where to put it, and then I organized other books. Only about two of those books actually landed on the nonfiction shelf, and I have no idea. Apparently, they're just scattered around my room which is quite messy, so that's, that's on me. So one thing that's really, really, really valuable to me in my life is letting people in my life know that they're valuable to me, that they're important to me, that what they say matters, what they care about, what they believe in, what they dream about, what um, their life is focused on. All those things are valuable, are important, that their humanity, them as a person, is important and anytime I have a conversation with someone, anytime I have a friendship or even just an acquaintanceship with someone, it's so important to me to communicate in the way I speak to that person, in the way I talk to, in the way I, I interact with that person. It's important to me to know that they know coming out of it that I value them, right? So I read a lot, a lot of nonfiction books. I mean, I don't read a lot. I don't read a ton of nonfiction, but when I read nonfiction, a lot of the books that I end up picking up are on effective communication and on this type of thing. And I think that this is probably my favorite, it definitely is my favorite book so far that I've picked up on this subject. I think that Dale Carnegie does exactly, he has this exact same value, exactly what I just described. That's his main goal too. And this talks about how to communicate with people in business settings, in social settings, in familial settings. He talks about how to show people that they're valuable and how to make a person see that that's important to you. And that is effective in every situation of life. And I think it's, even if this isn't your, one of your number one most important things to communicate to people, even if that isn't high on your list, I still think that this is a really a valuable book and a great book for making you kind of reflect on how you view the world and reflect on how you view success. And I just, I appreciate this book so much for seeing exactly what I value and showing me how to display that value more effectively. Next book on this list is The Picture of Dorian Gray. We have a theme here. This story is about a man who's very beautiful and he has people in his life who let him know how beautiful he is very frequently. So he becomes very vain and conceited. He has a portrait drawn of him. <sighs> how do you talk about this book? Spoiler free. Um, this is also about the descent of a character. Man, I love character descent stories. He gets really prideful, really wrapped up in himself, and it turns him ugly from the inside out. And I adore this book. <laughs> I adore this book because one, it's just a great read. It's just a really interesting story, but I also love it for the concepts that are discussed, for the more philosophical discussions that come from this book and from the journey that Dorian Gray takes and from where it ends and what it does to him. And I love it. I love, I love this discussion and all the things when 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 people read this book all the things that we can discuss together about it it's a great story in and of itself it's a great discussion piece and i love it for that next book on this list will be another nonfiction, and that is things my son needs to know about the world is that right yeah hey i got it right things my son needs to know about the world is one that won't be applicable to a lot of people, but it is to me. This is a nonfiction by my favorite author who primarily writes fiction. He, uh, this is his, a series of letters and stories that he wrote to his son, but published for the world. There's a lot of stuff in here that any parent could relate to and <sighs> Bachman does such an amazing job of taking these simple, non, non-important topics talking around them in circles to the point that you're thinking, what do you, why, why, why are we here? And then bringing it all together with the biggest gut punch that ha that leaves me crying at least. There's so many sections of this book that I read to my husband that had him also teary eyed because the, it's just stuff. It's a raw, real look into the messiness of parenthood, but more importantly, the incredible joy and wonder of parenthood and the fears that you have when you're raising a kid and just, it's so relatable. Everything he writes is so emotional. I just, 
this is an author that can do no wrong. This nonfiction hit me hard and it's one that I reread sections of because it's just so great. Next on my list is kind of a more general thing and that's just gonna be memoirs. I really, really enjoy reading people's real life stories. Usually the memoirs I read are more personal accounts of someone's story. This was written after Harriet Tubman had passed away, but it's a recounting of her store of her life, not just the Underground Railroad, but a lot of elements of her life and a lot of the incredible things that she accomplished and influential things that she did that are less well known, as well as a lot in to her personal life and personal things that she had to accomplish and overcome. And for me, just reading a memoir about a person that has gone through so much more than me and who has accomplished so much more than me is really eye-opening, humbling, and inspiring. And I, I feel like I always come out of these kinds of books just amazed and kind of looking at my life a little bit differently. So just in general, this is kind of a general recommendation, but someone in history or in life in general that has done something that you admire and look up to, reading a memoir about them, whew, can't recommend it enough. Next book on this list is gonna be a weird one, and that's Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. So Stephen King is an author that I still don't really know how I feel about. I've tried many of his books. I My feelings about them end up being all over the place. So far, my favorite book of his has been Pet Cemetery, and partially because it's a great story, but more so because I know that King does this in most, if not all of his books, most of his books, where he takes a real life thing, a real life subject and creates the horror around it. And this has been my favorite instance of him doing that. I love books that have deep explor explorations of grief. I think probably because grief is a, a, a concept and emotion that I really struggle to handle in a healthy way. And I loved the way King broke it down and worked through it. I know that he worked with psychologists and doctors while writing this book to get these things right. And I'm so impressed with how he did it in this fictional setting. And it took grief here with a small loss and escalated it and escalated it and escalated it. And the story itself was great. And I I've recommended this book a lot and I've gotten a lot of mixed feedback on it. Some people love it too. Some people think that it's super predictable and boring and we're really disappointed by it. And that's fine. I like the story itself. I thought the story itself was really interesting and good. But the thing that made this over the top for me, the thing that made this absolutely groundbreaking and phenomenal and mind blowing to me was that it wasn't just a great story, but that it had such a nuanced and complex discussion of grief within it. I think that King accomplished this on a level that impressed me and made me, I mean, I read it shortly after I lost someone very important in my life and I had already read nonfictions on grief to help me sort through what I was going through. But this was one of the most effective ways to help me sort through my grief in this horror novel, but it did. It helped me sort through my grief on a level that a lot of the nonfictions I had read didn't do. And that meant a lot to me and was really important to me. And I just really love this book for its many purposes. Next on this list, I will recommend every other Bachman book <laughs> that he's written. So Frederick Bachman is my favorite author of all time and uh, he does exactly what I just described King doing, except he does it in every single one of his books. He tackles really, really difficult topics and discusses them very bluntly in fictional settings. And he, first of all, Bachman's prose is unlike any author. I just, I'm amazed by his prose constantly. But he takes these complex, difficult, real life, raw topics and breaks them down in a way that's not holding your hand, that's not heavy handed, in a way that that is so simple and beautiful yet raw and, and takes these things, these real life things and makes me walk away thinking, whoa, I see that a little bit differently. Not necessarily 
not necessarily changing my perspective all the time, but a lot of times just I was able to think about that from another angle. And I love that his stories are great. He has great stories, but also every time I read a new book of his, I don't feel like I've had a discussion with him exclusively. I actually feel like I've walked through something with him. I feel like I've walked through a real life pain with someone who's walked through it too. And we just went through that together. And I just, what, what other author can do that? What other author accomplishes what Bachman accomplishes? I don't know, but I'm constantly amazed and impressed every time I pick up another Bachman book. And I still have more of his books to read. I read them very slowly because I need space between the amount of pain and self-reflection that comes from each of them, but I'm always impressed. There are other books that I consider putting on this list that I do think deserve to be on a list like this, but it wouldn't be a top 10 list if they were. So those here's some honorable mentions for more phenomenal, phenomenal books that I highly recommend, but I'm gonna end this list with my all-time favorite book. I have been promising that I would <laughs> that I would reread this book and have a full discussion on it for a long time. I still haven't done it. I promise you I will someday. Um, I have talked about why this book is so valuable to me. I think it's a great story. We'll say it again. I think it's a great story in and of itself on its own. Great story. I, I love the magic of it. I love the whimsy of it. I love that Peter Pan is just this little runt, this little brat that has so many layers to him. Oh my goodness, I love Peter Pan so much. I love the emphasis on all of his faults um, and where they come from and abandonment is a big theme of Peter Pan's character and uh, hardening oneself and running away from that abandonment um, family and family always being there um, is, is a big theme. And as a mom, <laughs> it hits me hard. Um, uh, and, and a focus on, especially near the end, on, on that, that parental, I will always be there for my kids kind of mentality. But not only that, also an open arm embrace to other kids that need you and, you know, adoption and bringing other children into the home. There's a lot of things that this fairy tale did that struck a certain chord for me. So not only is it a great story, very whimsical, very beautiful, very fun, very exciting, but there are some things that were valuable to these characters or that hurt these characters that um, felt and I appreciate. So Peter Pan on the list. Here's some books that I highly, highly recommend. Books that I am so grateful that I read, not just because they're a good story, they are all good stories, but also because they made me think. They made me feel either understood or made me see the world a little bit differently. And I appreciate them so much for that. So here's some books that I'm glad I read before the end of my lifetime and would recommend others read. I'd love to hear what your list is, what your top 10 list is. So be sure to continue chatting with me about it in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon.